myself. What has happened to you? It is me, your Lord and Master Jesus, peace be upon him. Why are you frightened? Handle me and see. Be all my hands and feet. For a spirit has no flesh and bones. What was he trying to prove by showing his hands and feet? Was he trying to prove that he was resurrected? Was he trying to prove that he was spirit? He was trying to prove that he was not a spirit. He was not resurrected. Next two verses. Gospel of Luke. Chapter number 24. Verse number 41 to 42. It says that they were overjoyed and they wondered. They thought he's dead and now they're happy that the Lord and Master is alive. Physical. With flesh and bones in front of them. They're happy. Jesus peace be upon him. Yet to confirm them says that do you have any meat here and they gave him a piece of broiled fish and an honeycomb and he took it and he ate before them to prove what that was resurrected to prove that he was spirit to prove that he was a physical body he ate and he chewed in front of them a piece of broiled fish and honeycomb to prove that he was not resurrected he was not a spirit but he was in flesh and bones a physical body If no resurrection, no crucifixion, no fish and blood. If you remember the story of Mary Magdalene, when she goes to the tomb of Jesus, peace be upon him on the third day, it's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 20, verse number 1, as well as the Gospel of Mark, chapter number 16, verse number 2, that it was the first day of the week, meaning it was a Sunday. Sabbath day is Saturday for the Jews. The first day of the week is Sunday. It was the first day of the week that Mary Magdalene goes to the tomb. Now why should Mary Magdalene go to the tomb on the third day after Jesus Christ peace be upon supposedly was dead? Why should she go? The reply is given in the verse earlier. In the Gospel of Mark, chapter number 16, verse number 1. That Mary Magdalene goes to massage Jesus peace be upon him, to anoint him. The word is anoint, which the original Hebrew word is masaha means to massage to rub to anoint and from this root word you can even derive the arabic word masi or the hebrew word messiah which means the anointed one which if you translate to greek it means christos from which you get the word christ the anointed one i'm asking a question do jews massage dead bodies on the third day have you any time heard Jews massaging dead bodies on the third day? And the answer is no. I'm asking the Christians. Do Christians massage dead bodies on the third day? And the answer is no. Do Muslims? Do we massage dead bodies on the third day? And the answer is no. So why is she going to the tomb to massage Jesus who has died on the third day according to the Christians? You know why? Because she was the only one besides Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus, who gave the burial bath to Jesus, peace be upon him. And when Jesus' body was brought down, peace be upon him, from the cross, she might have seen some life in the limb body. But naturally, she's not going to say, he's alive! Otherwise, they will put him to death again. Seeing certain life in the limb body of Jesus, peace be upon him, she comes back on the third day, after the Sabbath day, to look for a live Jesus, peace be upon him. A live Jesus peace be upon him. And it's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 20, verse number 1, and the Gospel of Mark, chapter number 16, verse number 4, that she finds that the stone has been removed. And even the winding sheets, they are unbound and placed in a pile. The question is, why should the stone be removed? And why should the winding sheets be unbound? and placed at the side, piled up at the side. If Jesus, peace be upon, was resurrected as a spiritual body, does a spirit require the stone of the entry of the tomb to be removed? If it's a spirit, those cannot stop a spirit from entering. The stone need not be removed. Why was the stone removed? And if a spirit has to move, does it have to unbound the winding sheets? It's not required. But if it's a physical body, the stone blocking the entry of the tomb has to be removed. The winding sheets have to be unbound, proving that Jesus, peace be upon him, 
the person who came out of the tomb was a physical body. And the tomb was a private property of the secret disciple of Joseph of Arimathea, who was a rich and influential Jew. And he had carved a big roomy tomb, maybe for himself, for future, in which Jesus' peace be upon him was kept. The tomb or the sepulchre. And according to Jim Bishop, he says, Jim Bishop, not Bible, Jim Bishop, says, it was very roomy, very big. Five feet wide, seven feet in height, and 15 feet in depth. Why do you require a roomy tomb? So that if anyone wants to help a person, it can be done easily. These are small rooms in Bombay. It is approximately 75 square feet. 75 square feet flat is big in Bombay. We find five, six people living in that room in Bombay, one of the most expensive places in the world. 75 square feet, you find four, five people living in it. So roomy enough if they want to help the person. Why would they want to help a spiritual body? A spiritual body is only going to help. But naturally, they want to help a physical body. Further, if you read in the Gospel of John, chapter number 20, verse number 15, Jesus, he sees that Mary Magdalene, from the earth, from terra firma, not from the heaven. He sees her and she's weeping. And he comes to her and asks, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? Knowing very well what is the reason, but yet asking. She says, and supposed him to be a gardener. She asks him, where have you taken him and laid him so that I may take him away? I'm asking a question, why did Mary Magdalene suppose Jesus to be, peace be upon him, a gardener? I'm asking a question, do resurrected bodies look like gardeners? Do they? Yes or no? No. So why should she suppose that Jesus, peace be upon him, was a gardener? And the answer is because he was disguised as a gardener. Now why should a spiritual body be disguised as a gardener? Jesus Christ was disguised as a gardener, peace be upon him, because he was afraid of the Jews. A spiritual body need not be afraid of the Jews. Why? Because according to Hebrew, chapter number 9, verse 27, a man dies only once. And after that is the day of judgment. Jesus, peace be upon him, said in the Gospel of Luke, chapter number 20, verse number 36, neither shall you die anymore. Because if you are spiritualized, you don't have to be afraid of anyone. No one can harm you. You cannot die a second time. If he spiritualized, why should he be disguised? Why should he be afraid? Why should he be in hiding? Why should he run away from the Jews? Proving that he was not a spiritual body, but he was alive. And he says to Mary, Mary, the one word is sufficient for Mary to recognize her Lord and Master. You know, because everyone has a particular style of calling the beloved one. And the tone in the style which you call a beloved one is sufficient to recognize who is the person. She immediately recognizes that it is Jesus peace be upon him. And she rushes forward toward him. Gospel of John, chapter number 20, verse 15, 16, 17. Jesus peace be upon him says, touch me not. Why? Why touch me not? Is he a bundle of electricity that if someone touches him, the person will be electrocuted? Is he a bundle of dynamite that if someone touches, they will blow up? Why does he say, touch me not? Because he was a physical body. Imagine the ordeal, the pain, the physical pain, the emotional pressure that he had going through all that so-called, supposedly put on the cross, put on the cross, all that pain and torture, it will hurt a physical body. He says, touch me not. And then continues and says, in Gospel of John, chapter 20, verse number 17, I have not yet ascended unto my father. Meaning what? That he has not yet been dead. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, unequivocally says that he has not yet been resurrected. Proving that he was alive. Later on it's mentioned in the Gospel of Mark, chapter number 16, verse number 11, that the disciples they had heard that Jesus, peace be upon him, was alive. From her, Mary Magdalene, but they believed not. You know, the Jews, they had a habit of posing questions, troubling the messengers. 
the Quran says that, the Bible says that. They posed question to Moses' people upon him. They troubled him. 